Triple Crown here, March 30th, 2024. It is time to run the gauntlet. As I was alluding to in some of the past few vlogs, I have uh, five shows in the next seven weeks that I will be set up at. And there was a lot of prep that, that got into it. There's probably going to be even more prep here as I run through this next cycle of shows. But I'm excited to kick it off with a brand new show. This is the first time this show has taken place. It is the J&J Show, which they are well known out in the Indianapolis area for the Fisher Show, also known for their Louisville Show, and now making their way over here to Westchester, Ohio to kind of break into the Cincinnati market area. This is at the Boys and Girls Club over in Westchester. I'll be set up here probably monthly going forward, and I am very excited for it. The closest show that is out there to my house, and I'm very excited about not having to drive too far. It certainly beats getting up at 5 in the morning, or even earlier sometimes, to drive a couple hours to go to a show. Here you see me getting my showcases out here. Got a couple more clerical things, behind-the-scenes stuff that I want to show you before we get into the deals. Let's take a look at those. Here's a question that I've been asked several times that I figure I'd go ahead and answer, and that is, how do I put the prices on my cards? Well, I use this P-Touch label maker. This thing is probably older than I am. It's been passed down through the family, and what I do is I will usually print off of a card as like a short print or something. I'll put SP on the left side, or I'll put what it's numbered out of. If it's a special serial number, I'll put that. So say it's 1 of 10, then I'll put 0, 1 out of 10. And I'll put that number on the left side, and then I put the price on the right side. I do like to trim off that excess there. And you'll notice that I use these electric blue labels. A couple of reasons for that. Number one, it stands out. I know that Justin, he usually gets compliments on his labels if you've ever seen them. They're black with gold fonts. They look really nice and classy. For me, I like these because they match my logos, right? I have the electric blue logo with the black background here. So I figured the blue and black would look really sharp on the cards. Something that stands out a little more than uh, a regular old price sticker. I like to make the fonts a little larger than what you see on a price gun as well, just so it's easier to read uh, when it's in the showcase. One of my repeat customers is over there building a nice hefty stack of football cards. While he comes up with a price on those, let's work on filling up our baseball case over here. And I'll tell you a little bit about how I set up my showcases. There is a method to the madness. And what I'll do is I'll put the slabs up top. I'll put my higher end raw stuff in the middle most of the time. And then my lower end raw stuff, we're talking the 10, 15, $20 cards are going to be at the very bottom of the showcase. And there is a method to the madness of why I do it this way. As for the slabs, I will normally try to organize them by player or team or even type of player if I don't really have multiples of the same player, meaning the rookie guys are going to be next to the prospects and the Hall of Famers are going to be next to other Hall of Famers or future Hall of Famers and try to put like cards together. You see I have a lot of the refractors here clustered with one another. And then I'll try to keep teams and players the same. You'll notice that Jordan Walker card I have on your far right, my far left. Uh, I'm going to move around because I have that Jordan Walker autograph. And I want to make sure that the two Jordan Walkers are next to each other. As for the lower end raw stuff, I like to put that towards the bottom and then work my way up towards the higher end raw stuff in the middle in the case. And that is because a lot of my lower end raw stuff is usually targeted at younger collectors. It's cards that are going to be more affordable in their wheelhouse. And a lot of younger collectors are shorter because they're kids. And when they come up to the table, the easiest thing for them to see is what is at the bottom of the showcase. Therefore, I put it down there so that they can see without having to really lean on the showcases or lean uh, or kind of stand on their tiptoes to see everything that's in there. And that way also, really any collector who's been up to my table before will kind of know where I like to put things and know where to find kind of what they're looking for. If, if I'm going to have it, it's usually going to be in one of these spots if they don't want to have to ask me about it. So that's how I do that. Now let's go ahead and show this deal that we're working on here off to the side. And then just keep you know, doing that. Awesome. Right. These were the ones I was pulling. These ones, I was kind of off. Right. This one, I think you priced it as a PSA 10. What do you have it at? 
like a lot less. Like a PSA 10 just did 350. The final lot was. <laughs> Here, I'll show you what else. Like 180 value. I'm gonna be too far off. I had a little better offers than yeah. that, unfortunately. So this one I wanted to be at 55 value. Okay. And then this one I wanted to be at like 85 value. Let's see what else we got. That was cool with all those, yeah. And the value. Yeah. Alright, that's fine. So I guess what do you want to buy these at? Is the question like for this one, like what do you want to buy it at? I mean I'd give you 85% of the lot. Alright, uh, that's added up here. Front. Comes out to. So 800. Yeah. Right, that's fine. Appreciate you. Yep, thank you. Not a bad way to get on the board. Puts me at 80% of my sales goal for the day already. And I think the reason that this gentleman and I work so well together is because we kind of have this give and take relationship. He gave me my number on that whole stack that you saw there earlier. And then there were those two cards that he wanted where I gave him his number on it and then we worked out kind of a bulk discount from there just because he was buying so many cards and that's the way that I like to do things right you know you I give you a little bit here but you give me a little bit there like if we're off on the values it's not just lopsided where I'm constantly giving them their number on stuff and they're constantly giving me my number on stuff and really I don't think that I ever really have to say no because well we we work pretty well together and get it done so Big thank you to him as always. He he knows who he is. Like I said, I usually don't give names on this unless they're a fellow content creator, but he gets a nice little stack there and I get some cash to start off the show. Let's keep it rolling, see what else I can move. This one, this one. Uh, the DJ Moore. I'll let you go ahead and grab them out. Uh, these ones right here. Just thinking all four of these for, uh, for 80. I couldn't do 80, I could do 90. See, I like to just get straight to the point with it. Um, I mean, where, where are you getting 90 from? I was thinking this is about 25, right? Okay. And I mean, I'm not gonna budge 15 on that, 15 on this, and about 30 on that. So this is upper deck, this ain't even eating. That's the problem oh, with that. Yeah. yeah. Don't say I'm an upper duck fan. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a sick card. It's definitely yeah, a sick card. It's just like, it's upper deck. So that's the pro kind of problem with that one. I still don't know exactly what his point was with that upper deck comment. Even going back and watching it back now, I, I don't know what he was getting at there. But like I said, I'm a big fan of upper deck football. I wish they brought it back. I hate to be like that. Can you do 85? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Give a give change. Uh, what kind do you need? Uh, just five. Can you do um, 110 on those? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That sale will push us over my goal for the day. Very pleased with that, especially because we're not really too far into the show. That Jordan card was one that I actually found in a box trying to get together a Com C order to send some stuff off there. And I guess I had overlooked that in a collection that I had purchased probably about a year ago and decided, ah, hey, you know what, I'll throw 20 bucks on this card, see what happens. Well, I use that to broker a deal for those three baseball cards nice to move some of the baseball here all right let's keep it rolling all right the audio for some reason didn't really pan out too well on this clip i'm not exactly sure why but it sounds like i'm in a fishbowl and because of that i'm just going to defer to the commentary here i sold that juan soto auto and hollywood brown rpa that you see on the screen for let's see 140 dollars checking my notes real quick and then I made a few deals off camera, sold a numbered Sandy Koufax. That was a prearranged deal, but I'll still count it for the show. I had a Tristan Casas five-star auto I sold, and then a Malik Willis Origins auto. And with all of those sales, it now brings me up to 12.05 on the day. At this point, I have more people starting to come up offering to sell things to me. And there's a lot of good quality cards that are just walking around the show floor a lot of them I didn't quite get to the number that the uh, sellers wanted to get to in terms of selling it.
but there are a few coming up here that I do make a deal on, including the best that I saved for last. Here you put it right here. Just put it right here. Five twenty-five. What percent is that off sticker? I think it's eighty-five. That's one I like it, but I don't know if I can... Where do you like it at, is the question. <laughs> I mean, realistically, probably like 50 bucks, and I know that's kind of low blow, but... It's I mean, if you're buying all that, then I'll, then I'll work with you on it. I mean, we've done so many deals that it's not worth... Uh... Figure out what this would be then, real quick, and then minus this, and then we'd add that in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 420 with without, 475 with. So that's 420 with the... Um, that's at 85%? Yeah, for all those, and then... 50 with this, so 475? Yeah. All right, that works. Cool. That'll be the icing on what has already been a very nice day for me. And look, this is, a, again, a guy who I've done plenty of deals with before, and he buys in bulk from me. I'm going to do as much as I can for him. He pays my sticker. He treats me fair. And because of that, I was willing to work with him on that J.K. Dobbins. Maybe I could have held out for more, but again, it's J.K. Dobbins. He's kind of a niche guy to the right Ohio State collector. I'm sure I could have sold that card. But instead, I will defer to him to find the right buyer for that and let him take all these off my hands and then give him a little bit better price on the Dobbins than maybe I would have liked to have taken. But again, it's it's all about give and take. It's about building and maintaining those relationships. I'm not going to uh, bend on things. I'm going to be firm but fair, as I like to say. All right, now it's time to try to start buying some stuff since I have sold so much already. Yeah, I like how you do that as well. The sticky yeah. it, it very helps easy. it, yeah. So where would you want to be at for the whole stack and all these? I was, um, so I know I had five dollars a piece on that. I'll come down to I could do half, two fifty, or two bucks. Okay, so I, seven. Let's do let's do two because I rounded it up and I did thirty five for the stack. Okay. And this then that. I know that's probably around 30 bucks, I think, when I last checked. Yeah. Um, I can go 20 there. Okay, so you got 20 plus 35. Yeah. Right, so we'll do 55 there. We'll be at like 10 on this one. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Fifteen on this one. That's what I was thinking. Hold on to this one, because you're going to get more for it at Xenia than what I'm going to I appreciate it. Yeah. I was going to take this out, and I forgot about it. I just looked at yeah. it. I appreciate you. Yeah. This is a couple that came up looking to trade with me. This gentleman asked in particular for my Jordan Walker. Eventually, we added an Anthony Richardson slab I had to the stack. And what I'm doing right now is kind of evaluating where I price all my stuff at, where he wants to be at it, and then where I want to be on his stuff as well. You notice that I took out that Chase Brown RPA there. And that is because he sets up at shows as well. He set up at Xenia, he set up at Eastgate, two of the shows that I frequent. And because of that, I don't want to take something from him that he can get more from. So you hear me tell him there, like, you'll get more for it at Xenia. And that's really the case. Like, his sticker on it, he can get a lot more for it than what I'm going to pay him for it. So there's really no sense in doing that. Now, some of the other things, that's a little bit different. And I'll try my best to acquire those here. <laughs> Like probably like 90 on this one. Maybe at 100. 100, okay. What were you thinking on this one? Value wise, so I, I went over and talked to Justin and me and him valued it to be right, right around 125. 125? Um, it's very hard to comp, I know. So that's where I would value it at. Um, I'm, I'm open to whatever on it, to be honest with you. Just want to do 100 on that one, too? 110. <laughs> I want to say yes. I'll probably have to say at 100. That's cool. All right. I, I get it. <laughs> Where do you want to be at on these here? Um, Do like 250. 250. That's 20 off. That's final man. So we got one, two. That's what I came value wise when you're adding yeah. it up. So we give 
you 45 bucks. We got a deal. Cool. Sounds good, man. Easy enough. Enough. It's about as short and sweet of a cash, partial put cash, partial trade, I should say, deal that you could ask for. I was able to get some stuff to kind of fill up my cases a little bit more. The Walker Auto and the Richardson I was into at the right price, so to speak. And that Ellie stack I actually picked up for a friend of mine. He gave me five bucks more than what I valued it at there. And because of that, I'm going to count that towards that sale since I ended up taking those over to him very shortly thereafter. So some more stuff to fill up my cases. And then I was able to kind of move off of some things that I was into pretty good. That is sweet. I thought it was just like a stack of relics. I didn't realize it was. Uh, uh, that's really cool. It's out of 10. A bunch of Hall of Famers. That's a very 90s card. And now we come to the main event. These two gentlemen I have done a few deals with before at one of the local trade nights around here. And I actually made a deal with the guy who's on the left first. And the guy who's on the right then offered for me to take a look at his stuff and this was the very first card i saw i wish i had got my reaction to it on camera because i'm pretty sure i said something like "Ooh, that's sweet and that jeter super fractor i kind of had a feeling that i cannot leave without it i'm gonna need to make an offer on it i'll probably have to pay strong hopefully i'm not too sticker shocked by what he tells me but that's one of those cards that you never know when you're going to get an opportunity to jump on something like it. And when that opportunity knocks, you better be ready to answer the door. I'll be at 1,050. I really thought about my offer carefully here. I wanted to go with 1,000 initially, but decided to add the hook to make it 1050. I didn't expect him to take it. What I'm really expecting is one of three numbers to come back at me, 11, 1150, or 12. Ideally, I would like to meet him at 11, but I have a feeling that he might say 1150, and we might have to work a little bit more to get down to 11, but there's only one way to find out. Let's see what he says. I think the lowest I could go is 1100. 11? Away. So we gotta do it. I'm glad that we could shake hands on this. As a dealer, there's a lot of times where I kind of feel like I'm going through the motions, so to speak. This Jeter card in particular, though, is one that really gets me excited again. I wish I had caught my initial reaction because I can only imagine how excited I was and how my eyes probably popped out of my head when I saw that thing in his case there. But I absolutely love that card. It's the first time I've owned a Jeter Super. I have not owned a super of many players out there, but Jeter being one of those hobby blue bloods is one that was definitely at the top of my bucket list to own at least for a portion of time someday. And for the time being, it is mine. And that it puts the exclamation point on a really good show. I made a couple more sales at the end that pushed me over the 2K mark. And all in all, how could you not say this was a big success? So the start of the gauntlet is about as good as I could have asked for, and I'll be sure to see you back again next week with my Xenia recap. Until then, take care, stay safe, be kind.